I am downtown in the beautiful city of Denver, Colorado. Coors Field is behind me. I have been told that I am about to find a winning sports better. Let's see what we can find. I flew from my city of Las Vegas, Nevada to Denver, Colorado for a behind the scenes look at a sports betting operation that claimed to be winning a lot of money. As I was waiting to meet the crew, I walked around downtown Denver trying to imagine what a winning sports betting operation actually looks like. If there's one thing I've learned in the past year, it's that the bookie killers wear a lot of jewelry and drive flashy cars. They also have a persistent need to remind you of how amazing they are while winning millions at the books. What up, guys? It's the one and only Steve Stevens, a.k.a. the bookie killer, a.k.a. the boss. That's the f game. Well, please sweep. Two more parlays, cash. We met up for dinner and I learned a lot about how they do business. These three guys are strategic partners with a sports better named Dave Miller and shared how they turned $250,000 into $2 million in just a couple of years. Before meeting up with Dave, they told me this. He is just like a beautiful mind. You ever seen that movie? I have. Okay, so he's like Russell Crowe in that movie. He can spot an edge, like he'll watch the Don, I don't know if you know what Don Best screen is, but it tells you every odds of every sports book in the world. He can watch that screen and tell you where, there's a 5% market edge here. He'll go there bet it real fast across tens of 10, like 10 accounts. This is Micah, the CEO of the group. He handles the money, assists with the operations, and ensures everything is running smoothly. He's probably the smartest guy I've ever <laughs> met as far as numbers go. He's constantly looking at trying to get gain edges on games. This is Tyler, one of the betters. He also just happened to be the guy that just won $1 million in the DraftKings Championship last month. This is the leaderboard, and this was his username in the contest. Here's the email he received indicating his victory in the contest and the amount of taxes that would automatically be taken out. And he shared his Wells Fargo account so we can all take a moment to see what it would look like to have $891,000 hit our account all at once. The funny thing about the contest was that they won by taking a huge gamble on the Jaguars in a parlay, but to these guys, they see things a little differently. You had your whole tournament life on the Jaguars to beat Buffalo. But that, dude, they offer this sick correlated parlay. Like, how are you gonna not bet a 14 point dog get, and the total is what, 41? I mean, how about yeah, I bet no, that? I hear that. that. But Jacksonville? Oh, <laughs> bet me with you, but wow, what a. I mean, any team but them, right? Forget all the numbers go out the window when it comes to those guys. They won outright. Yeah, I know, I know. I know. <laughs> yeah, Props to you, props to you. <laughs> It's kind of ironic that I left Las Vegas to go to Denver, Colorado to find a winning sports better, but you gotta go where the stories are. Before heading to Dave's apartment, I was introduced to a grocery bag full of cell phones. These phones are critical in the operation. As these guys constantly face getting limited in their online casino apps, they have to rotate phones in order to stay ahead of the books. This will all make sense in a minute. All right, we're gonna try to bet an NFL, and show this, David. By the way, I can't cash that out. I really can't. Anyway, uh, we'll go. We'll do an NFL game. The Chiefs and Broncos. Look right here, ten and a half everywhere. This is MGM. So either side, pick one. Um, go Chiefs. Chiefs. Okay. Let's try fifty dollars. One dollar max on the NFL side at MGM. They wanted to show what it looks like when you are winning money in the online apps. You get limited, which means the apps will not allow you to bet the amount you want. They limit you to $1, like BetMGM did with Dave, so they aren't technically banning you, which is a word they do their best to stay away from, but by limiting you to $1 bets, obviously they're shutting you down. You guys are going through phones all the time, huh? Turn and burning the phones and the names and the, the names on the accounts, but each name gets to do each account, if that makes sense. In confidentiality, they shared their exact strategy with me, and I won't share it with you, but basically each member of the operation bets in different apps, and they constantly have to rotate phones because the apps limit you based on the Mac address of the phone. New Mac address means new casino app login, which means back to business. And then at some point, they'll all get banned, and then we play another one, bites the dust, and another one, uh, we play the app. Really if you had to guess, how much money do you think you make? From last year, gambling. over a million and a half. This is Dave Miller, the mastermind of the operation. Interesting, is that the best year you've ever had? Yes. What do you think was the best year before this year? 600,000, 700,000, a couple times. Have you been profitable every year you've been gambling? One year, no, because I didn't want to work that year. <laughs> what, you just got lazy? I had my little one. Oh, uh, okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Did the long? walks in the park every yeah, day. Yeah. And you I... said you've been gambling for 19 years? 19 is that correct? Years, yes. 19. Since so you're I basically 21. profitable for 18. And then what do you think is different about this year that you've made significantly more than other years? 
All of a sudden, Colorado legalized sports betting. 27 companies just showed up, boom. And their main focus, just getting their apps going, not really the other stuff, like watching out who's winning. They just wanted to get the ball rolling. 3.788 returned 4.144. And that was in, yeah, six or seven months. This was when I first got here. I pretty much just bet here at FanDuel. The finger you see on the screen is another member of the operation, Miss X. She is responsible for ensuring all the casino apps remain logged in before they get auto-logged out due to inactivity. It happens quickly. She's also responsible for placing the bets as they are called out. I've had so much heat. At this point, it's whatever. I don't, I'm not worried about it. The casino apps claim to allow all kinds of bettors, even the winners, but spending a couple of days with this crew made it pretty obvious that claim isn't true. I don't want to bash FanDuel because I think the way they're handling it is kind of like a settlement even when they cut your limit all the way down to the lowest amount you could still get a couple thousand on an NBA game or an NFL game and to your average person I mean this is a really big bet so even for myself there's still value and I, and I feel that what they did was more than fair MGM though I couldn't even cash my points out the dollar max it's extreme and Barstool pretty extreme they cut it <laughs> <laughs> to a ridiculous, ridiculously low amount. Here's a tweet by Joey Kanish showing an email from Barstool Sports saying their app is intended for recreational members, not for bettors who show non-recreational tendencies. Recreational bettors is a more polite way to say losing bettors or squares. Basically, you get banned. Either you're up a lot, you bet a mistake. They'll a lot of times they'll ban you for that or cut your limit. If you're a big losing better, they won't. If and the other way that that he was talking about earlier is if you keep closing good. So you lay six, and when the game starts starts, the line's eight and a half everywhere. If you have a, enough bets like this, even if you're losing, they'll ban you. Barstool Sportsbook, Stooley, Big Cat, all frauds. Corporate shills, only worried about their own pockets. Oh, come bet the can't lose parlay. Oh, we're, we're all buddies here. We're all, bu we're all buddies as long as you're losing money to their sports book. Why do you think you got banned? just up a lot of money over a big sample size where they know it's not luck. It gets to the point where it's a big enough sample size where it can't be luck, if that makes sense. When do you feel like that happens? Is there a certain number? It's probably the dollar amount and then your average bet. Because so, you were in Vegas, you were making money, but then why did you Their main here? focus was not to get the ball rolling. It was, they were already established. So because of that, they had a big sample size on everybody and I had all kinds of heat. It was harder to bet things that I wanted to, more efficient numbers. Yeah, so you're gonna move here because you felt like you had an edge. Big edge. A big edge. Now, for those of you, you know, watching that might not understand, what does an edge mean to someone that doesn't know sports gambling? There's a discrepancy between their numbers and the global going rate. Pinnacle, Bet Chris, Bet Online, and the the sharper spots in Nevada, Circa, Superbook. I'll even say Atlantis too. It's real, real sharp. And did you get banned from every place in Vegas? No. 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 Circa doesn't ban anybody. Yep. Westgate doesn't ban anybody. Station casinos, they don't, they don't ban anybody. Okay, good. There's, there's quite a few. See, you, you didn't leave because you were getting banned. You moved it's here because just, you felt like there was more it, of an edge. It's just the, way more of an edge. And the places that don't ban you, the reason they don't ban you is they're up, they're, they're watching their numbers like a hawk. Right. So you're not going to find market inefficiencies as much. Sure. Here you'll find them just all over the place at, at every single company. Yeah, so we watched you over there on one of the phones. You could only bet a dollar. So what you're saying is you aren't <laughs> yeah. getting banned, you're getting limited, right? To get a the correct terminology, right? Exactly. Yeah, so you're not getting banned, but you're essentially getting limited to the point where you can't even make money. Yes. For 5,000, it limits it to 974, therefore it's a dead name. As Friday night came to a close, I was amazed at how they operated their gambling business. Before I left, Dave showed his Wells Fargo account with over $1 million in cash. They showed account statements in every app. They showed proof of the DraftKings contest winnings. They allowed me to see exactly how they have an edge against the books, and the group shared all of their confidential secrets. Unfortunately, I can't share everything with you. Friday was just the start, as Saturday was the day where we'd really see Dave in action. It's Saturday morning, we're heading to Dave's place now to see the guy in action. I've been told that he works 
12 hours nonstop. I'm really excited to see what we're going to get on video. This is a big college basketball day. We're here on at Saturday. I mean, probably plenty of games today. What type of volume do you do in a single day on, let's say, a normal Saturday? Today, over conference? a million in bets. Um, and that, for the audience, that means you're placing a million throughout the day. At some point, you'll be gambling a million dollars in total. Well, it, it, it sounds riskier than it is. Yeah. Because basically, that million is spread out over hundreds of bets. Max bet. Wichita State plus 12 and a half. A big reason why I made this video is to show how much sophistication and effort is needed to make money sports gambling when you have an edge. You're about to see a clown for comparison. Hey yo, what up man? This is boy SBK. $100,000 game today. I got the cameras rolling. We're gonna show up how I make Big money every day, $100,000 game a day. I bring up Mozzie VS a couple times because he's the perfect example of a massive losing sports better. Some people actually believe his claims of winning millions at the sports books. He couldn't be a bigger fraud, and if any of you gained access to his statements in his Bet MGM account, you'd see why the casinos love him so much. Mozzie is a Hall of Fame level clown, but all these guys you see on Instagram are just as bad. Here's a little insider secret. They don't actually bet. How much do you think you've lost in a single day? On the worst day you've had? I would I would say about a hundred thousand. A hundred thousand dollars lost. Yes. And you can stomach that just fine? Yes, yes. I know, I know it sounds crazy. Yeah, but because the, it's all relative and then you yeah. know, okay, it'll play itself out, that's about as bad. Because if you have an edge, you know that okay, there's gonna be some days you lose, and then there's gonna be some days you win. So then I guess on the flip side is what are the best days? Do you remember the best day off the top Same, of hand? Same, 150,000. The big difference between a guy like Dave who verifiably wins and the clowns I target is that Dave has to place hundreds of bets across multiple accounts in order to reach his number. The max bets are about $3,000 per bet while his account is still active before getting limited to a dollar. Let's say you're, bet you're betting three to 5,000 times 200. It's gonna play itself all out almost every few hundred picks to where you're you're gonna be positive if your edge is big enough. Yeah. It's it's a sliding scale to the overall volume like we talked about yesterday, uh, to your edge. To how much per bet. It, it, that's how it works. Do you know how to calculate your specific edge yes. or is it just you do? And okay. I'll show you. I'll okay. show you. Interesting. I am curious, do you do you have like a specific number that you know over enough bets you're gonna be up four percent on the dollar, essentially? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The dollar. Interesting. That was but, but, our, but our edge here, our edge, it's, it, it's hard to find a true, to even more than 2% edge in Vegas on something that you could get a lot down on, which would be at, at, at this, so this would be at Circa, this would be at Stations, this would be at Superbook, uh, South Point, if I forgot somebody, sorry. These are probably the main ones that you can get a lot down on. And literally, they're so sharp with their numbers, you're not going to exploit anything pregame. I mean, they're... they're they're wide. And then if you try to chase steam, you're going to be cut. They'll chop your limit down quick and yeah. they won't show you the door, but they'll, they'll, they'll make it where you're in for a struggle. But yeah. here, so here, I mean, you can, you can bet anything. I mean, you could bet pregame, the props. I mean, I don't want to blow up their thing, but guys are betting anything here yeah. that you can get down. You can get down on here many ways, a lot of money on, on 10, percent plus edges yeah now and I'm, you can get mass volume this is the key yeah you, a 10 percent edge with a small bet with one bet okay a big deal but when you can get over 10 percent uh with mass volume then your expected value even on a day like this is you know 60 70 thousand Wow. If, you, if you can get it, you know, a million in bets with six or seven percent edge. The college basketball games on Saturday began. Dave couldn't tell you a single player's name, but he could tell you the line movements. He was glued to his computer screen, similar to how I am when I'm getting pitched a 200% MLM Ponzi scheme on YouTube. So let's say the spread is nine. You can take plus nine and minus 110 or minus nine at, at that particular sports book. So in the long run, this is a four and a half percent edge to the casino on straight bets because half the time you're going to win win the bet in theory half the time you're going to lose so the half that you lose you're going to lose the 10 cents on the dollar right and then they factor in pushes that's why that's why it's a little bit less as well um the five percent what you're trying to do is you're trying to basically either find some type of market discrepancy so what that means is if a spread is like eight globally or the true number is eight in theory you're trying to get in basketball even just one point yeah. So you could take plus nine and minus one ten and have a four and a half percent edge with each half worth ten cents. So you kind of re reverse it on the sports book. It's the same as like getting eight plus one ten, if that makes sense, 
Or you can lay seven minus one ten if, if the true number is eight, and it, it would be the same example. Each half point worth nine or ten cents, uh, depending on if it's college or pro basketball. And you, and you would need, in theory, one point off the going rate. So, you, so yeah, stale numbers, you can, there, there's many ways you can, I mean, you could beat it, like you're, you, you beat the move. So for example, you like a game and then the whole, the whole global market moves. You could have a place just, they don't do their numbers correctly and, and you could find these opportunities. You could find that a lot here in Colorado. That's why a lot of guys are here. What I found with sharp sports bettors is that they only care about line movements and trying to beat the market. At this point, the market is so efficient that opinion players almost universally cannot defeat the juice that the casinos take. Pinnacle, Bet Chris, Bet Online, and actually in Vegas, you got Circa, you got Superbook. These are kind of the superpowers of the of basically the whole world. They are the number. One thing you should all start looking at is where these social media gamblers are betting. Bet MGM, Bellagio, and William Hill are all notorious for limiting or banning someone instantly if they have an edge. Being able to bet $100,000 on a single game on the Bet MGM app is the easiest sign that you're losing long term. And if you're able to find a discrepancy off of what Pinnacle and Bet Chris have, this would be a plus EV bet. Assuming you're getting more value on the spread to the juice you're paying. Like the other example I gave, 20 cents of value when you're paying 10, if that makes sense. And they, they don't wanna offer that. So these sports books as well are just sitting there making sure their number is within the same ballpark of the other superpowers. You know? Right, so that's essentially your edge as you're looking for over the game. Yeah, you're looking for half possibly... point, point. Actually, to be honest with you though, a lot more here in Colorado, even a point and a half plus. Maybe I shouldn't say that on camera. <laughs> Everyone might move here to Colorado. <laughs> no, it's all right, there's enough to go around. <laughs> yeah, I've noticed, I've, I've watched the apps and I've seen all yeah, the products. So I showed you yesterday. Much? I'm gonna yeah. show you a little bit more, but yeah. you can, some of the discrepancies that I found through the years, they were mind boggling. In order to beat the books, you need to have an edge to overcome the juice you have to lay with each bet. Dave shared a really cool short story on how he would beat the books years ago with in-game betting. Take note of what hoops he had to jump through in order to win. I don't, I don't mind talking about it now. This was at Cantor at the M Casino. They did the odds off the TV. We made, <laughs> we made a lot of money with our $8 secret weapon, the radio quicker than the TV, we made the odds off the TV, you can put this one together. So we would literally hear on the radio, and he hits a three, and it's like six still. Okay, lay the six, because you know it's going to eight. So in theory, this is great closing line value, right? Because it goes, at the moment you bet it, it's already eight, you're laying six. So we did that. Then what they did to counter that is they stopped putting the games, they stopped putting the games that like your radio, so within 400 miles, you can get a radio feed. They wouldn't put those ones on in play. So we, we tried satellite radio and then that was slower than the TV. So then like a week went by, we couldn't figure it out. We said, we're basically screwed unless we go to the actual game. So after a week, we finally put it together. How can we be at the game without being there? And, and I thought of it, put an ad on Craigslist for someone to hold their phone up to the radio. So we were like, Oh my God, that's genius. So they would still comfortably do the games like the Pistons and the Hawks, knowing there's no way they have the feed here because it's not on local radio. We were betting that, killed that. You could even bet, this is how good it was. You could even bet, will the next free throw go in or no. <laughs> so we would miss some on purpose just to not be that obvious. On a busy basketball Saturday, Dave easily spends 12 hours betting. This is around 10.30 a.m. when the action is just getting started. Throughout the day, the phones have to be charged as they're running hot for all 12 hours. Once Dave zoned in, we wanted him to focus, so we walked down the street to Mile High to attend the Chiefs-Broncos game. You're here still at 7 p.m., still going strong. Yeah, the games finish about 10, 10.30 Colorado time, so. That's about, when we'll, that's when we'll call it quits. Play, we go t all the way to the end of the last game. How much do you think you put in action today? Probably like seven, eight hundred thousand, if I had to guess. There's a good chance you'll put a million dollars in today if we go. It'll be probably a little bit under, but yeah, yeah. 
They were slowing down near the end of the night as the games were coming to a close, but they were placing bets until all games were over. For the week ending January 9, the group profited $60,380, not bad for a single week. When I first walked into Dave's apartment, I asked him where the jewelry and flashy cars were, and he laughed hysterically. He wasn't familiar with any of the fake guru clowns until I showed him a couple of my videos. I wanted this video to highlight the difficulties a winning sports better faces as they try to navigate the casino apps that constantly limit plus EV betters. Hopefully all of you will stop paying thousands of dollars to people who persuade you to buy their picks because they have jewelry and an exotic sports car. If they can't define their edge, stay away from their picks. This was a different video style that I really enjoyed making and I hope you enjoyed it as well. In 2022, I'd like to do more behind the scenes videos of successful operations so we can all compare and contrast with fake gurus to better understand who's legit and who's not legit. I couldn't release some of the footage that would give away their strategy that could possibly lead to them getting banned. I also made sure to check more than just one casino app for proof. Hopefully you get the reference. And I have to keep it entertaining too, so I cut out some of the videos where Dave is diving deep into plus EV and advanced sports betting strategies that went over my head. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.